So, turns out problems do come in threes. We had the heart bleed vulnerability, we had the shell shock bash bug, and now we've got the poodle. Rot roll. So, what's the poodle? Well, it's the padding oracle on downgraded legacy encryption. And if you're impressed that I remembered what poodle stood for, I wrote it down just there underneath the camera. <laughs> and, well, where is this vulnerability? Well, the vulnerability is in something called SSL3. SSL is the technology that's used whenever your computer goes on the internet and communicates with a web server if it wishes to securely communicate data back and forth. It's the thing which stops your data falling into the hands of hackers and should keep it secure. But SSL version 3.0 is something like 15 years old and it's not completely foolproof. There have been new versions which have come out since. Now, what's happened is those awfully clever guys at Google have found a way of tricking a web browser into using SSL 3.0 rather than the latest and greatest way of encrypting those communications. And that means, in theory, a hacker could steal information as you think you're securely sharing it with a website. For instance, they could steal session cookies. And if they steal session cookies, that could mean that they have a way of reading all of your webmail or maybe posting tweets in your name, something that you don't want to happen. So is your browser vulnerable? Well, the good news is there's a simple test. You can go to a website called poodletest.com. I'm not making this up. And if it finds that you're potentially vulnerable, it will display a picture of a poodle with a little speech bubble coming out of it saying, vulnerable. And if you're not vulnerable, it will display an image of a Springfield Terrier instead crazy out there, isn't it? Now, there is a potential drawback of not supporting SSL 3.0. If your browser doesn't support that 15-year-old methodology, you're going to have trouble accessing websites which still rely upon SSL 3.0. Good news is there aren't very many of them, but of course there are many, many computers out there which are old legacy systems which may still be reliant upon it, or people still running ancient versions of Internet Explorer which are fundamentally flawed, like Internet Explorer 6. <coughs> so what can you do? Well, if you're using Google Chrome or Firefox, you can set the minimum SSL version which you want to support, not to be SSL version 3.0, but instead something called TLS version 1.0. Now, hang on, SSL, TLS, what's all that about? And surely TLS version 1.0, that sounds like it's older than SSL version 3.0. Well, no, it's not. TLS version 1.0 should really probably have been called SSL 4. But, um, you know, computer people are jerks. Yeah, that's what happened. So the name changed and they decided to make the version number 1.0 just to confuse everybody. Maybe you want to test your website or a website which you visit to see if it's vulnerable to the poodle problem. And you can go to a website called, wait for it, poodlescan.com, hey hey, which is kind of disappointing, doesn't have any pictures of poodles on it, but you can just simply enter a URL and it will tell you whether that domain name does exhibit the poodle vulnerability. Is poodle as bad as Heartbleed and the Shellshock bash bug? I would say no, because poodle can't be exploited remotely. With things like Shellshock, the hackers could be on the other side of the planet trying to own systems and steal information. But this is a real problem and we need to fix it. We need to make sure that people are running browsers which can communicate securely with safe web servers. For now, Google's recommendation is that browsers and servers adopt a different system of deciding how they're going to communicate and stop falling back to older standards which are known to be insecure. If you want to hear more from me, subscribe to my YouTube channel or visit my website at www.grahamcluley.com. Cheers!